Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we're gonna talk about compression and exporting files in the right format from Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. Also, we have reached 15,000 subscribers for my YouTube channel. That is a huge milestone. Thank you very much for your support, for your love and for your great feedback. Okay, let's get started with this tutorial. A lot of people have wrote me about like similar questions. How do I get the right size? How do I get the right expert format? So let's talk about that. First of all, let's talk about how do I get the right size for a picture? There are two different methods. You could use the crop tool and as you, as you can see up here, you can enter the format with the size. You can select the units like pixels, inches, millimeters, centimeters, even meters. If it's a really big print, you can set up the DPI and then you can start to crop. Um, this is not a method that I like to use personally. So I will show you my favorite method. So let's close this real quick. What I do, if I do something for my customer and for example, we need a lot of the same image sizes for their website. For example, they have a lot of stock or they want to show off their designs, stuff like that. What I do, I create a file in the size that I need. For example, let's say we want to have a full size wallpaper background for our website. So I'm setting it up as 1080p, 72 DPI for of course, internet use, click OK. So we have the file now. And now I can just go to File, Place, select the picture I want and place it in there. I can already see that the picture is a lot bigger. You can also, for example, if you're in Windows, when you go to File and Place and you hover a little bit over the file, it will tell you the dimension. So in this case, it's 8,688 times 5,792. This is a lot bigger from the resolution. So I can make the picture smaller. If the resolution of the picture is a lot smaller than what you intend to have as the final result, you cannot really use that picture because it will become very pixelated. So always use pictures that are bigger and then size them down to what you need. So in this case, you can see here, we can go, for example, with this. And we have the bear here, it doesn't completely fit on the picture, but it's just for a demo to show you. Okay, so now I would go on to export the picture. And if I have 10, 15, 20 files like that, I can just place them in there, put them in the right direction. And you probably ask me, why don't you just um, automate that? Well, the reason for that is I'm always sitting um, sometimes alone, sometimes with my customer and we are selecting what kind of part of the image do you want because this is uh, for the composition is also important to do. So I mostly do it by hand um, to have like the best looking picture for the website. Okay, so now that we've done that, the question is what kind of format and what kind of compression would you use for that? Okay, so we have three file sizes that are mainly used for that. And then there are two extra file sizes for the odd occasion that you actually need that. So let's talk about that. I go to file. And by the way, I know there is a special persona for export. I'm not sure why, because it doesn't do anything other than the export. I rather go here to file and export. I feel like I have more control and it's kind of easier to use the export persona. It's kind of confusing, so I'm not going to go into that. So you go file export and then you have here the most important file formats on the first position. So you have PNG, you have JPEG, you have GIF or GIF, whatever you want to say. And then we have two more formats that you would probably use for internet use which is SVG or EPS. Both of them are vector file formats. In this case, we have a bear. So that means we have a lot of colors in here. We have a lot of changes in the color and also in the brightness and all these kind of things of the values. So this means we would probably choose JPEG for that. So to go into the difference, a good idea is to look down here, estimated file size. And you can see here, 
Um, when you go to 100%, it's 1.63 megabytes and you can reduce the quality to whatever you want. You have some presets here, which say best quality, that's 100%, then you go high quality, it's 85, and then you have medium and low quality. I would not suggest to go with medium and low quality because you get fragments in your picture, like these blocks that don't look good uh, from the compression. So don't use that unless you are in a country that has really slow internet, then it's of course okay to use a, a smaller compression so you can at least see the picture even if it doesn't look that good. But mostly I would suggest go with high quality or if you have to, you can go down to 80 at the very most 75 from the quality. And you can see, this is a big difference. 75 has 242 kilobytes and 85 has 329 kilobytes. Well, with the web speeds today, it's not really, does it really matter this kind of difference? But of course, if you have hundreds of pictures on your website, it makes a little bit of a difference. Okay, so we can see here, if we go with high quality, 330 kilobytes around that. If you go to P and G, First of all, you don't have a quality setting because there's one, only one kind of PNG and the estimated file size is 2.5 megabytes. Really big. You don't want to have that. You can see that this is not the intended kind of image for this file format. So what's the idea behind PNG? When you have smaller images and it has an odd shape, like it's a circle or an oval or this kind of shape, a triangle, you want to have a transparent background, that's the file size that you want to use. And then you have the GIF format or GIF format. This is for files that have very little color changes like flat color areas in there, for example, a logo or a text or stuff like that with maybe five or 10 or 20 or 30 colors in there, but not thousands of colors. Of course, you can see estimated file size 1.4 three megabytes, not ideal for that. And of course, we're not gonna use SVG or EPS because these are not vector files. Okay, so we are going to use JPEG. Let's go to export. We have set it to 85 and let's say B for bear, save that, go to our folder and we can see it's actually 330 kilobytes. So the estimate of Affinity Photo was pretty good. Now let's talk about the other uses and some special cases. So let's say we have a logo. In this case, our logo is gonna be a heart shape. Let's draw a heart shape here. Uh, change the background color like this, for example. Okay, cool. So we want to export only the heart, not the background of the picture. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna to go to file and export again. And down here where it says area, you can select selection with background selection, without background. First of all, I'm gonna show you what happens if you use a JPEG. We have again set it to 85 quality. The estimated file size is 5.68 kilobytes. So let's export that without the background. H, save, and then file place. And you will see it doesn't have the picture background, but it has white as the background color because our canvas was set to white as a color. Uh, Affinity Photo does that automatically for you. So JPEG does not have the ability to export images with a transparent background, which we need to have in this case. So again, let's select the, the heart, go to file, export and use P and G, and we select selection without background. You can see this is only 3.54 kilobytes, so a little bit smaller. Export that, H, save, file, and place. And by the way, this is the reason why I always turn on the file endings, because now I can differentiate them pretty easily, as you can see here. So let's place this, and you can see it is transparent. We don't have a background here for our heart and it looks great. So let's try another method. Like I said, if you have small shapes with very little color in them, you can go with a GIF or GIF format, export, let's select GIF 
and selection without background. This is only 630 bytes, so it's a lot smaller than the JPEG and the PNG file. Export, again, H, save, and let's go to place. Select our GIF file. There we have it. Again, it looks great, doesn't have a background, pretty cool. I will show you the difference in a second. Before we do that, I will again export the heart, but as an EPS file in this case, so it stays a vector shape. So let's go to export EPS. You can see here, just click on export. Oh, wait a second. I have to uh, click that I only want the selection. Selection without background, export H. Let's save that. And you can see here now, if I place that, here we have our um, EPS. It doesn't have a preview in this case. Let's place this here. It looks the same as the others, but it has a big advantage. If I resize this now, you can see that it stays sharp because it is a vector file. If I do the same thing to my GIF file, you can see that it has very hard pixel edges around that. If I resize my PNG file, you can see that it has softer edges around it. You can see here soft edges, very hard edges, and with our EPS, very sharp edges because it's a vector file. Let's set everything back and go to one more special case if you want to export text. So let's write test here. And here's the important thing. If I select the text now, the test text, let's just write text. Maybe it's a bit less confusing. I select a text, go to file and export, and I can again export as an EPS selection without background. But now observe what happens. I export that. Let's write here text. And then I place this again, place this again. There it is. First of all, over here in the layers, it says embedded document. And you might think, hey, cool. I still have my text. I can still edit it. But you would be wrong about that. Because if you double click on that, you will go into the embedded file and you have layers in here. And these letters in the text have been converted to curves. So they are now curves basically as you can see here you can edit them like a normal vector shape and by the way don't be confused by this pixelation this is how um, affinity photo chooses to display this this is not pixelated at all it's completely vector shapes and is completely sharp in any size uh, that you're using so you can see here if I go over here again and it resize the text it's still completely sharp. So this would probably be the benefit of exporting text as an EPS file. Um, but you can of course also use in this case a GIF file or a PNG file to just export the text without the background. Okay, I hope this has explained to you the, the use of the different file formats, the different file sizes and why to use different kinds of compression. Thank you for that. And if you have more questions, please write them in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.